Uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues. I'm Mikola Davidzuk. I'm from Kyiv, Ukraine. I'm political science and political commentator and the author of a book, How Does Putin Propaganda Works? And uh, is a theme of my topic. And I'm going to describe you a few cases uh, with which we meet in Ukraine and uh, which experience we have. Uh, you know that Russian military campaigns uh, need influence of propaganda uh, to support their soldiers, soldiers who killed people in Ukraine, in Syria, who killed people in Georgia in 2008. And uh, Ukraine has the latest experience of fighting against that propaganda. Uh, a real fact that in Ukraine, in the east of Ukraine, were killed more than 20,000 people during the last two or three years in both sides. And two million people were displaced. It's so-called uh, inside country immigrants. But in the same time, troops and the weapons are only a few percent of modern war. The main approach is a hybrid diplomacy, manipulation, demoralization, and a media occupation. I want to describe, first of all, maybe TV and other media, which become a tool, uh, like a media weapon, uh, which are in the hand of a Kremlin and a Putin. Uh, exist two different types of uh, TV propaganda in Russia. First one is the federal, which focus in a local political market, like federal level. And the uh, second one is uh, international. So, first one, gives Putin a monopoly in a political market. He's a unique person in Russia who all the time caring, so-called caring about Russian people, all the time, 24-7. And uh, you may ask me why he has a rating of 80%. Sometimes it's impossible, it's like dictatorship, because it's impossible to have such high rating, but he still has. And uh, the answer to this question is a media monopoly. They have only one TV channel. And it's not like in opposition to Kremlin. They are trying not to be loyal to officials. It's a TV reign, Dost. And they work in, uh, try to be liberal and uh, free media. But the rest of TV channels, they all the time manipulating. They manipulating of uh, freedom of speech. They manipulating of experts. Uh, they manipulate in of sociology and so on, so on, so on. Second level is uh, international propaganda, and you know about Russia today. Uh, it's the most famous international propaganda tool, which created about, I think, 10 years ago, and tries to work in a global level. Works bad, it really works bad, uh, but still doing it. Uh, because they have a huge, enormous political budget. Uh, they don't earn money by advertising budgets. Uh, nobody donates for that TV channel. Uh, they know that Kremlin every year gives them a lot of money, sometimes a half a billion. Some experts say that unofficial budget is a one billion. Nobody knows, but it's really enormous budgets. For example, in Ukraine, Russia also created few TV channels. Uh, where work a lot of Russian, pro-Russian journalists, media experts, media managers. But uh, the owners of the TV channels are so-called Ukrainian citizens. But uh, the main purpose of the TV channels destabilize the political situation inside the country. They try to find uh, some terrorists uh, in the Kiev, they try try to destabilize the situation in the west of Ukraine, uh, try to find there some se separatist points. And uh, such TV channels are still working in Ukraine, and uh, our authorities don't know how to find, find uh, against them, uh, because uh, it's unpopular to fight against the media. But is, this is sometimes not the media, it's a, like rather hybrid uh, weapons. Uh, which work against the country where they are situated. Uh, second point, what I want to describe you is the social networks. Maybe some of you 
meet such interesting situation when you write something in the social networks. For example, your opinion about MH17, or maybe your opinion about Putin's aggression in Syria, or your attitude to annexion of Crimea in a Facebook, in a Twitter, or in a post of some article, and you meet a huge, enormous stream of aggression to your person, yeah? Uh, the people hate you. They wish you all the worst ever. And you don't know what to do, and uh, you become in depression. Uh, I don't need that Facebook. I hate it. They don't love me. And you leave. You become a passive citizen, yeah? Uh, but is it real, people? Is it real people so hate you, and uh, all the time spending, for example, like 24 hours a day, writing some political comments. Uh, of course not. Of course not. And in Russia, they have like a special, we called it farms or fake factories, where a thousand people working, writing comments. Writing comments against you, against your government, against your people. And uh, it's real. It's really real. And uh, in Ukraine, some journalists try to make some investigation where they're working. For example, uh, it's very stupid, uh, no, no, maybe stupid, it's very interesting when in some small Russian cities, uh, the main uh, search in uh, Google, uh, in a small city like uh, 10,000 10, people or maybe 20,000 people, the main uh, words of search in uh, Google, Poroshenko, it's Ukrainian president, Kiev, political situation in Kiev, it's all in Russian words. So sometimes such search request is like more than 100,000. In the same time, when in that city live only 10,000 people. So that factories situated in the small cities where salary is very small because they don't want to pay a lot of money. It's cheaper to find some guys and girls in the small cities and they pay them like 300 bucks a month or 500 bucks a month. And they write in all the time 24 seven and they're making small propaganda in the social networks. And it tries to make you passive, that uh, you forget about your voice, that you forget about your opinion, your attitude, and so on, so on. Uh, second thing in the social networks, for example, in Ukraine, we met such situation when uh, Kremlin propagandists and the media managers, they created some uh, groups in the social networks, like group supporters of terrorists, uh, group supporters of separatists. For example, in such some cities where like 5,000 people, they created group where real people was like one or 200, I don't know, but they, they owed 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 fake accounts and they show in television in local television or federal television, and said, look, in that small city where I live, for example, 5,000, 3,000 in a group, supporters of separatism. This city must to join Russia, because they all support Russia and the Russian president. And they manipulate of such information. They took a small screenshot in a social network and then show it in a big screen of television. And uh, I want to say about uh, bloggers, opinion leaders, political experts, so-called political experts, who work for Kremlin, receive salaries every month. And from sometimes, for example, in a, some Ukrainian regions, they have a small salaries like a half thousand dollars. And some who work in uh, Moscow, who visit their... Uh, TV shows, for example, some people from United States, they said they, they are experts of military questions, military issues, but that guy work in a bar, or that guy work in a football team, or something like that, but they write in a TV screen that he's an expert of political issues. He's so smart, he's from United States, or he's from Germany, from Poland, from Ukraine, and they have bigger salaries because they are I think they are stars in Russian television. Nobody knows about them in their countries, but they are stars in Russian television. And a lot of such people work in Ukraine. Uh, where were uh, opened uh, Surko is a helper, assistant of Putin, uh, his mail, 
uh, he was, uh, that mail was hacked and uh, the journalists find their few letters, a uh, few budgets which describe the uh, budget of media in Ukraine, creating of a uh, website. And it's, uh, if you want to know, it's one million for eight months. Uh, it's website. And the uh, Kremlin paying for that. And uh, about the salaries of pro-Russian Ukrainian experts who works in Kiev, in Odessa, in Kharkiv. And it's like from $2,000 a month for commenting how Putin is great and uh, till 5,000 bucks and they commenting, writing the blogs and they give a com comments to TV. And the last topic of my speech is uh, allies. You know, uh, in Ukraine, uh, we have a strange situation before. Now we fight against it, but before, uh, we had a lot of military allies, political allies, I think a lot of officials who worked in Ukraine, but the main purpose of their job was Moscow. Uh, it's the people who studied in uh, Moscow military universities, in uh, uh, communist academies, and so on and so on. But uh, after the Soviet Union fall, uh, they still worked for Moscow. And their uh, motherland was in Ukraine, it was Moscow, and uh, they support them. And uh, we tried, like Ukrainian government, uh, Ukrainian officials, trying to find them and uh, to fire at them. Because, for example, uh, we had some secret information about our soldiers in Eastern Ukraine, and one guy sent it in a mail to Moscow. And they asked, why did you do that, man? You are fighting uh, for your motherland. He said, no, it's not my motherland. And the, the most funny thing is that he didn't move to jail. He's free, he's working in Kiev, and, and everything like is good. But we had a lot of people who worked in the uh, government, and they are really, really pro-Russian, a lot of political parties. So uh, so-called political elites in Ukraine uh, were paid by Moscow, by Kremlin, and uh, they didn't work for Ukraine, they worked for their real owner. So it's not only the case of Ukraine, I know in some European countries also they have not so huge number of that pro-Russian uh, elites, but you know you can meet in Brussels a lot of uh, pro-Russian Gazprom uh, lobbyists who all the time tells you that you are wrong, that you need to stay in Soviet zone, and uh, that no place in Europe for Ukraine or Georgia or Moldova and so, something like that. But I, I think uh, they also work in a small, not so public level. Ah, okay. And uh, I think this problem exists and uh, we need to find some solution, how to fight against it. And uh, I think maybe our Ukrainian experience uh, may be useful for you how to, f how to fight against uh, that propaganda, that media propaganda, uh, because we meet it uh, every day in a Facebook, in a TV, sometimes talking with the people. So I think we need to mark a problem then to say that they really exist and there to start to fight against them. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.